<laughs> As I was preparing for this talk, I did a lot of research on bitterness. And to no surprise, I got really pissed off. <laughs> now, I say that jokingly, but what you seek, you will find. Now, we all have to deal with it. Anger, resentment, disappointment, when someone lets us down or uh, something just doesn't go our way. But how many of us know, by show of hands, someone, and sometimes in our own families, who are always riding the bitter bus, right? If that person is sitting next to you, just wink. <laughs> if you can't think of somebody specific, you just might be that person. <laughs> Bitterness not only drives people away, but what's even worse, research shows that it's bad for your health. It increases stress, heart disease, and high blood pressure. Earlier this year, R&B singer Eric Roberson put out a song with a very powerful line that says, God has a funny way of showing you lessons. Now, the ironic thing about this line is that when God is showing you those lessons, most of the time, it ain't that funny. <laughs> because those lessons usually come in the face of adversity or setbacks. And what I have learned through every facet of my life is that when it comes to facing adversity and setbacks, you ultimately reach a crossroads where you're faced with a choice, bitter, or better. But more importantly, what I've learned is that it is not just the choice of bitter or better, it is the process of moving from bitter to better. Now, let me say that again. It is not just the choice of bitter or better, it is the process of moving from bitter to better. And that's what I'd like to talk with you about today. Life is a journey of growth, and it's best traveled from the inside out. Attitude is everything. As the saying goes, life is 10% what happens and 90% how you respond to it. During an interview, we'll ask a job candidate, beyond your resume, tell us your story. And most people start out describing their lives as moving from this mountain peak to the next mountain peak. But we all know it's the valleys in between the mountain peaks that shape who we really are. For me, my life's greatest accomplishment and highest mountain peak, 33 years of marriage to my beautiful and fierce wife, Yvonne, came, oh, give it up, you can give it up. Now that 33 years came after a valley experience uh, where I had a short marriage that ended in divorce in my mid-20s. And here's a clue. If you're arguing in the limo on the way from the reception, <laughs> you may have missed a warning sign. It was an epic failure and a setback. I was not only on the bitter bus emotionally, I was on the struggle bus financially. You ever have a time in your life where you felt like you had it all together <laughs> and you realize how wrong you were? You couldn't tell me your boy wasn't sharp. <laughs> I had my mom drive all over town to find that purple shirt. <laughs> but that's the way it was when Yvonne and I first started dating. She says it like this. I liked him, but there were three problems. Number one, he drank too much. Number two, he cursed too much. And number three, he charged everything on a credit card. Since I've been with her, my life and my choices have gotten so much better. I don't drink. I cut way back on my cursing <laughs> until our son became a damn teenager. <laughs> and then finally, and I say this with a point of emphasis, I am a black man with a really good credit score. <laughs> but I thank her for helping me move my life from bitter to better. And then there are the professional moments where we're challenged to move from bitter to better. 19 years into my career, I felt that I was prepared for my dream job of becoming a television station general manager. I had done all the jobs, I had taken all the training, and we'd moved all over the country. But my career was stalling. The outgoing CEO had a much higher belief in my potential than the incoming CEO. And as a husband and a father with a young family, I needed clarity. So I flew down to Atlanta, and I sat across a 
small circular table from the person who can make it happen or not make it happen. And I asked the question, am I on the short list to be a general manager in this company? And when that person answered, no, I don't see that happening, I kept my cool. But I had one thought in my head from Fred G. Sanford. You big dummy! <laughs> I was at a real crossroads, and I learned two important lessons. Number one, if you ask a tough question, be prepared for a tough answer. And number two, while I had to respect that person's opinion, I didn't have to accept it. As a result, I went on offense with my career, and I left that company 10 months later for my first general manager's job with a company that believed in me. I'm now in my 21st year as a television station general manager, and I oversee multiple stations. Moving from bitter to better works. Then there are the moments in society where we're challenged to move from bitter to better. In the spring of 2020, we were not only in the early stages of a global pandemic, but we were facing a major social justice reckoning with the murder of George Floyd. And for me, despite being a black dude for a really long time, I felt compelled to deepen my own understanding of the history of race in this country. Of the several books that I read, Cast by Isabel Wilkerson, it was powerful but it was painful. Her description of the hierarchy of human value that this country was built on with whites at the top and blacks at the bottom, it got me uncharacteristically angry. In fact, I had to put the book down several times just to calm down enough to finish it. Then at the very same time, like many leaders of color, I was called upon to support my company's elevated commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. It was work that I was proud to do because we were serious about progress and we were playing the long game. I was a source of perspective for our colleagues of color and my white colleagues. Which leads me to this short public service announcement to my white colleagues. We really appreciate you leaning into these discussions about race. We really do. We know that you want to be a part of progress, part of the solution. but. Just keeping it 100, when it comes to talking to you about race, y'all can be a lot sometimes. I'm just saying, y'all can be a lot sometimes. Now, we can be a lot sometimes, but y'all can be a lot sometimes. So I reached this point where I needed some inner circle wisdom from our chief diversity officer, Grady Tripp. I asked him, how do you deal with this in your position? And he said, I've experienced the same frustrations, but what I have decided is that if people are operating in good faith, I give them grace. And I thought, wow, what a powerful nugget of wisdom and insight that I rephrase like this. When you are talking about race, put a G in front of it and do it with grace. Now, it's much easier said than done because racism is one of the most traumatic and difficult topics that we wrestle with in this country to this day. And systemic racism is like carbon monoxide, dangerous for all, but deadly for some. Sometimes it's invisible, it's imperceptible, but you can sense it, you might even smell it, and it can kill you. But I thank him for helping me move from bitter to better. And in this, I've discovered that there is a process of moving from bitter to better. When we think about roadside assistance, one of the first services that comes to mind is triple A. And what I have learned is that there is a triple A process in moving from bitter to better that I'd like to share with you right now. There are three A's in the triple A process. The first A is acknowledge. Call it what it is, anger, resentment, disappointment. Name it if you, that helps. Like Chris Rock <laughs> at this year's Academy Awards when he said, Will Smith just slapped the sh out of me. And you know what I'm saying, I'm being respectful to the Cardinal. 
I didn't want to say the word. But it was a painful, uncomfortable situation for everyone, but he acknowledged exactly what happened. So the first A is acknowledge. The second A is ask the right question. Like Anton Jackson, <laughs> the intellectual, resourceful bum played by Damon Wayans on the classic comedy series In Living Color, who would look into the camera and say, how could I use that knowledge to work for me? <laughs> <laughs> what is this here to teach me is the right question. The wrong question is, why me? The third A in the AAA process is action. Take it. Move in the direction of progress, even if it's a small step. Just as Oprah credits as one of the keys to her success, ask yourself, what is the right next move? And then when you move in the direction of progress, do so without the weight of resentment or holding a grudge. Focus on grace and growth. So that's the triple A process. Number one, acknowledge, ask the right question, and take action. In closing, our greatest freedom is the freedom of choice. So when you are facing adversity and setbacks, I wish you the wisdom and the courage to choose uh, to move from bitter to better using the triple A process. And the 1991 hit, The Choice Is Yours, from hip hop group Black Sheep, says it well. You can get with this or you can get with that. Thank you very much. <laughs>